Today on the newscast, the Biden administration is set to restart nuclear talks with the Iranian regime. Could we see a new Iran nuclear deal? Plus, Russia and Syria conduct yet another joint military drill. Should Israel be concerned? Get all the breaking details next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. It was a very busy weekend in the world's most chaotic and strategic region, the Middle East. We've got four major breaking news stories for you that we need to get you updated on. We will go through them in rapid fire fashion. Before I get into it, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. As you are about to hear, there's a whole lot going on in the Middle East, and we break down why it matters to you, no matter where you live around the world, in these Bible times we are living in today. So let's get right into it. We'll start with the big story, and it's not an encouraging one. The Iranian regime is feeling pretty good about itself right now because the United States and European powers, yes, are set once again to resume those disastrous Iran nuclear talks. Now, this all started on Friday when a top European Union representative traveled to Tehran to meet with the Iranian regime in a desperate attempt to revive those nuclear talks which had stalled since March. Remember, we've broken this down a whole lot here in the newscast in Vienna, Austria. The Iranian regime was meeting with representatives from a few world powers, uh, France, Britain, Germany, Russia, and China, who are aligned with Iran, friends of Iran, and supporters of the regime, and then the United States. Now, the talks with the U.S. were indirect because Iran demanded that. They demanded that U.S. diplomats not be permitted to be in the same room face-to-face -face with Iranian diplomats. Now, you would think the United States, the leader of the free world, would, would laugh and say, okay, we're out see you later, then we're not going to take part. But no, that's not what happened. Instead, the United States agreed to still participate in these talks in Vienna. U.S. diplomats were in the other room as Iran was negotiating with Britain, France, Russia, and China. And even worse, Russia played the role of mediator between the U.S. and Iran during those Vienna talks. Yet, the U.S. doggedly remained in those talks, even as, as we've documented here in the newscast many times, the Iranian regime is not only attacking U.S. soldiers in Iraq and Syria, but also actively plotting the assassination of current and former U.S. officials, specifically former U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. All of this is unfolding, yet the Biden administration says, no, we're not going to walk away from the table. So we did have this delay, this stall since March. But folks, it should surprise no one watching the Watchman newscast that these talks are about to restart. And here's the kicker. Apparently now, U.S. diplomats and Iranian diplomats will meet face to face. Imagine that. These talks are apparently moving on from Vienna to Qatar. Now, Qatar obviously is uh, a nation, a majority uh, Arab Muslim Sunni nation, a Persian Gulf nation in the shadow of Iran, which has had a pretty good relationship with Iran over the years, not to mention a very cozy relationship with the Muslim Brotherhood. Qatar also does not have relations with Israel. Uh, there is a U.S. military presence there, though, so that seems to be, uh, in the view of U.S. officials, the perfect place to meet with officials from the Iranian regime. So they're going to do that, folks. In the coming days, they're going to restart these nuclear talks. That's on the U.S. end of things. Britain, France, and Germany, hey, and the European Union, they're lining up. They want to make a deal with Iran at any cost. It is the definition, the picture of appeasement. We've seen this script before. It doesn't work. But that is the road that the West is heading down. Now, one interesting nugget here, China and Russia, it's unclear how involved they will be in this latest round of talks that are about to resume, folks, any day now. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. The game has changed a lot, obviously, between Europe and Russia since Russia's invasion of Ukraine back in February, and China has been at loggerheads with the United States. 
And the key point here is that Russia and China are not honest brokers when it comes to the Iranian regime. They're going to have the mullah's backs at all costs, and we know that. So, folks, this bears watching. To me, this is a victory for Iranian regime blackmail. The attacks against U.S. interest in the Middle East, the threats against Israel, the threats against U.S. officials, they seem to have worked because none of that convinced the Biden administration to walk away from the negotiating table. Here's another example of the blackmail over the weekend. Our second major story to dig into here, the Iranian regime launched a satellite into space. According to them, they haven't said if the satellite was, uh, if this launch was successful or unsuccessful. They apparently, Iran's Revolutionary Guards Corps launched the satellite successfully, according to them, into space in 2020. They've also had several failed attempts now, we'll see how this launch over the weekend went, but why should you care and why is this part of the blackmail strategy? Well, those rocket launches, the kind of technology used in launching those rockets into space is the same kind of technology that Iran can use to develop intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs. Folks, they do exactly what their name says. Iran already has the largest ballistic missile stockpile in the entire Middle East, and they are developing them still at a rapid clip, regardless of any nuclear deal. But intercontinental ballistic missiles, again, they are designed, as the name says, to travel across continents, to travel across oceans. Those ICBMs are not for Israel. They're not even for Europe. Those ICBMs are for the nation Iran refers to as the Great Satan, that would be the United States. By the way, you only develop ICBMs for one reason and one reason only, to mount them with a nuclear warhead. So needless to say, the satellite launch is a point of great concern. And it's another example of Iran saying, hey, you don't want to come to the negotiating table and give us what we want, then we'll continue to cause trouble. We'll continue to drive for the bomb here. We're testing a rocket that you know the technology can be used to develop ICBMs. The blackmail strategy, I'm sad to say, seems to have worked. I'm not surprised, disappointed, but not surprised. And rest assured, Israel is waiting in the wings and observing all of this very closely. The problem here is that Israel, as we reported here in the newscast, is in the midst of a leadership change. Yair Lapid, probably this week, is about to assume the prime ministership in Israel as Naftali Bennett steps aside and the Israeli government officially dissolves on its way to what looks like elections, new elections, the fifth round of elections in three years this October. So not a great time to have political instability when Iran and its proxies are on the march. Iran is driving for the bomb and these disastrous nuclear talks look set to resume. Now, along these lines of U.S.-Israeli cooperation, a very interesting report over the weekend surfaced of a, quote, secret meeting between U.S., Israeli, and Arab military chiefs in Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt. Now, apparently Israeli and U.S. military officials back in March met with military officials uh, from Egypt and Jordan, which is no surprise. Israel has peace treaties with, its, with those nations, but also Qatar, who we mentioned, and Saudi Arabia and also representatives from the UAE and Bahrain, who Israel also, of course, has Abraham Accords peace treaties with. But the Saudis and Qatar know that, but they were also part of this meeting, nonetheless, this secret meeting, basically to form an air defense coalition. What does that mean? Real simple. The Iranian ballistic missile and drone threat that we have documented so much for you here in the newscast, whether it's the Houthis in Yemen, Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Gaza, Hezbollah, of course, in southern Lebanon, or those Iranian-backed militias in Iraq and Syria, they are all armed to the teeth with tens of thousands of ballistic missiles and rockets and a growing fleet of thousands of attack drones, many designed and supplied by the Iranian regime. So not only is Israel concerned about this threat, obviously, as Israel is surrounded by a ring of fire, but the Arab nations look no further than the UAE, where I recently spent time. Abu Dhabi was bombarded back in February by drones and missiles fired by the Iran-backed Houthis. So missile defense is a major concern, not only of Israel, but the Arab states and, of course, U.S. forces that are still in the Middle East are in Iran's crosshairs as well. 
So good news that they had this meeting and they are forming or strengthening, I should say, this alliance. Intriguing, of course, that the Saudis and Qatar, maybe Qatar can change its spots, who knows, but intriguing that they were in this meeting as well. Uh, but in talking to Bahraini and UAE officials back in April during my visit to those two Abraham Accords nations, they were very clear. They want Iron Dome. They want Israel to share that missile defense technology to help defend against the Iranian regime and its missile and drone onslaughts. A lot going on, as I shared at the top, but we have one more quick story to hit on before we get out of here. Uh, Russia and Syria. We told you earlier this month about that joint uh, air maneuver, I should say, air force drill that they conducted together over the skies of Syria, including along the Israel-Syria border near the Golan Heights, or along the Syrian side of the Golan Heights, right at Israel's doorstep. Well, yet again, late last week, this time Russia and Syria paratroopers from those two nations conducted a joint drill together in Syria, a stone's throw from Israel. Folks, we're seeing the Russian and Syrian military cooperation ramp up, and that is no coincidence because we have also seen concurrently Russian criticism and condemnation would be the, the correct word of Israel over its airstrikes in Syria against Iranian assets there. We've been talking about this for weeks now on the newscast that we think a turn could very well, well come where Russia says to Israel, no more, no longer will we stand aside and let you conduct airstrikes against our allies, the Assad regime, Iran, Hezbollah, in Syria. That day, I believe, is coming, and Israel needs that freedom of movement and operation in Syria to push back Iran's advances. Very interesting times right now, folks. Obviously, prophetic implications whenever Russia turns against Israel and, and takes the back and aligns itself with Israel's greatest enemies. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You can tell a lot about a regime and a leader, Vladimir Putin, by the company they keep and the company he keeps includes Israel's greatest enemies at Israel's doorstep. Keep it all in prayer, folks. God is in control, and he still sits on the throne. I believe it will be a very interesting week, so keep it right here on the newscast for all the latest news out of the Middle East and beyond that matters to you. Thanks so much for joining us here today on the newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you, and remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.